So you invest in one of our great Hume Safe Water 10 ultraviolet disinfection systems to make sure the well or lake water at your home cottage or cabin is safe for your family. Good choice. Now you're planning on installing it yourself, but where does it go? How does it go? Where is it installed? Is it something? Is it something you can install yourself? And can you do it without soldering? Relax, you sure can. And I'm gonna show you how starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. Now, this video is ideal for you if you're a do-it-yourselfer or a plumber, and you're looking to install one of our Hume Safe Water 10 ultraviolet disinfection systems, and you're looking for great tips and tricks on doing that installation yourself. Now, before we go any further, if you're not 100% sure how these ultraviolet disinfection systems work, I definitely encourage you to check out my video. I'll put a link in the description down below. So there are some pretreatment requirements to make sure your water is compatible with ultraviolet disinfection system, especially for well water. So your water has to have a hardness of seven or less, you have to have 0.3 parts per million of iron or less. And if you have manganese in your water, it has to be 0.5 parts per million. So if you have any of those on your well water, you have to deal with that first. Now, when it comes to lake water, you don't need to worry about all that stuff because that stuff isn't in lake water, but you have to make sure that there's no, no turbidity. And if you have some tannins, you know, a bit of that weak tea color, you have to make sure the ultraviolet transmittance is at least 75% or higher, or you have to compensate for that um, by upsizing your ultraviolet disinfection system to handle that extra capacity. You leave space, so you need to leave 20 inches of space above where the ultraviolet lamp comes out to make room for future uh, replacements of that ultraviolet lamp for removing the sleeve and for cleaning it. And you also need to make sure there's a couple of inches, at least a couple of inches below where the filters hang so that when you unscrew the filter housings again in the future to do maintenance, you need to drop it down a little bit to take that out and the install location needs to be protected from freezing, and that there's a 110 electrical outlet nearby where you can plug it in. And since we want to make sure that both the hot and the cold water is disinfected, this needs to be installed before the water branches off into hot and cold. Now, since this unit gets mounted on the wall, it comes pre-assembled where you see it here with the filter housings, the UV lamp, all connected onto this white bracket at the top. So you need to mount that to a wall. Now, I definitely suggest you use a 2x4 or something like that across here and make sure that you're catching a couple studs. And you also need to make sure that this is mounted exactly the way you'd see it here. It can't be turned 90 degrees, but the system is fully reversible. So what that means is if your water flows left to right, as it does here, comes into this side, flows out to this side. But if in your situation, water flows right to left, you just remove the ballast, turn this 180 degrees and connect it up that way. All right, enough of all that, let's get started. So the first thing you need to do is shut off the water after your pressure tank, and then as close to where you're gonna install this piece of equipment, you're gonna cut the pipe. Now, whether you're using PEX or copper, uh, you can do this as a totally solder-free installation just by using shark bites, fittings like this. Shark bite, quick connect fittings, or something similar to that product. And so what I've done here, I've shown you a bunch of different options. So this is a flexible hose. It's actually a, a heater hose. It's, it's the type of hosing that's used to connect to your hot water heater. And the beauty of it is that you can get it with a, sh with a shark bite or quick connect fitting at one end, and the other end has a threaded fitting. So then what, you, what you're going to plan to do is you're going to plan to put a shut off before the ultraviolet disinfection system. Now, if you've already got one, like I say, right after your pressure tank, then you don't need to add a second one. But I just wanted to show you that uh, you've, there's a, a lot of options. So again, this fitting here um, is a uh, quick connect and on the other end is threaded. So then we just take a, a, a piece of uh, copper pipe like this. Now this is threaded at both ends. Um, it, it's called a nipple and uh, it comes in different lengths. This is also one here. And then that just gets threaded into the, the input side of the ultraviolet disinfection system. Now on all of your threaded fittings, you wanna make sure that you make a watertight seal. And to do that, you're gonna use two different methods of sealing that. So the first is you're gonna use Teflon tape. So I prefer to use the white Teflon tape in this instance. And then you put the Teflon tape onto the pipe You hold it with your thumb, the Teflon tape onto the pipe, and then you go around the pipe. So, 
going to want to go around four times. Try not to get any folds in it. Like that. And then once you've gone around four times, you can snap it off. And then you're going to use a sealant, like this sealant here. Take that sealant and put it all the way around. Like that. And then you're going to thread your the piece onto it. I can show you with this one here. You're going to thread it in there. So you can see what's happened here. You thread it in there, and then you just make sure it's as tight as you can, as tight as you can get it. And then you're going to take this end, and you're going to do the same with the Teflon tape and the 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 pipes, uh, the pipe sealant or dope, it's called. And then you thread that whole thing into the side of the ultraviolet disinfection system. So as you can see, there's two blue filters, and then the uh, stainless steel canister or the stainless steel reaction chamber itself here. So the water flows into the first chamber. That's the inlet side. Then on the outlet side, over here, over on this side here. So what happens here is you have to be sure again that you put a sh you install a shutoff valve. Now you probably won't have one in your house at this point, so you're definitely going to make sure you install that. Why? Well, the reason why is when it comes to doing filter changes in the future and something you're probably noticing right now after you've cut that pipe is all the water in the house is going to start draining back down. So you need to make sure that it, when you're doing the filter changes in the future, that doesn't happen, right? So that's why you need to put a shutoff valve after the system. So the other thing to keep in mind, especially if you're using PEX, is you do need to have 16 inches of copper um, coming out of the system. And that's because we can't have that ultraviolet light from the reaction chamber in here shining onto that PEX because it'll eventually degrade it. And we definitely won't, don't want to do that. And once you run those 16 inches of copper out of the system, then if you choose, you can switch back over to PEX. And again, super easy to do without needing to solder at all. You just use one of these shark bite fittings, three quarter inch to three quarter inch, or if yours is half to half, doesn't matter. You can put copper in and PEX back out and continue on from there. And if you haven't had much experience working with uh, with these uh, shark bite fittings. I've got a great YouTube video that kind of goes through all that. And again, I'll put a link in the description down below so you can definitely check that out. And just a word about the ballast location. This is this box here, the electrical controller that attaches to the UV lamp. So typically I just mount it to the front of the unit, it comes with a couple of bolts and nuts so that you can mount it on the unit. If for some reason you choose to mount it on the wall somewhere nearby, you definitely can. Just make sure that it's not going to be somewhere where any condensation from pipes might drip onto it and that it's not in the way of uh, where you're going to be changing the UV lamp in the future to make sure that you have access. Next you grab the quartz sleeve and you use that with a cloth because you don't want to get your fingerprints all over it. You can also use rubber gloves if that works better. And then the gland nut. So the gland nut is on top of the uh, stainless steel housing. So you grab that. And if you look inside, you'll see that there's a red O-ring uh, in there. Now it should already be pre-installed. 99% it already is. If not, it comes in a baggie with the uh, red O-ring and the black O-ring. And uh, you'll need both of those at this point. So then install the red O-ring. You'll see a, a slot in there that it fits right into. Once you've got that on there, then you grab the black o-ring and slide it onto the end of the the quartz sleeve and just put it down about three quarters of an inch or so and then you feed <coughs> and then you feed it into the open end there's an open end and a, a, a smaller opening at one end and a larger opening at the other end so you feed it into the the end with the larger opening slide it in you'll feel some resistance and then keep on going and then just look inside to make sure that that quartz sleeve went all the way past that red o-ring inside there and came right up to the, the shoulder up at the top and just give it a little a twist just give it a little twist to make sure that it's nice and tight and then you'll see the black o-ring sitting up inside here all right you just put this inside and you're going to tighten that but it's only going to be hand tight so in the box, you'll see a spring. So that spring sits down inside the quartz sleeve. So you can just drop that inside. 
And then you grab the UV lamp and uh, holding it with a clean cloth or uh, rubber gloves if you so chose. And you'll see four pins on the end. So you'll see the, the, the pins, there's two, basically two rows of two and they're spaced slightly further apart. So the lamp can be plugged into the connector one of two ways. If you have trouble plug, plugging it in, uh, rotate it 90 degrees and you'll be able to plug it in no problem. Now just a word about that spring. People often ask me what's that spring doing in there anyway? It's a safety device. So basically if, if by mistake you end up dropping the lamp inside then uh, the bottom of the lamp would, would burst through the bottom of that quartz sleeve. The quartz sleeve is actually quite fragile so the spring cushions it. All right so then we feed it in and again, now you can, hand, you can handle the lamp by the ceramic ends, but you can't handle it by the, the uh, glass so sides. And then we just plug this guy in and push it all the way down. You just push it straight down. And then you slide it onto there. And there's a plastic nut on the side. Just hold this up here a little bit, you can see a little bit better. So you see this plastic nut on the side? That's what holds it in place. So that plastic nut, you just, just hand tight, it doesn't have to be very tight at all. And then you'll see here's the ground wire. So on top of the unit, there's a nut. You remove that nut. Attach the, there's a bolt that sticks up. You put the ground wire over the bolt and then put the nut back on and tighten it in place. So the next step is to add the filters. The water flows in through this side, out through that side. So the first filter it goes through is the sediment filter. The second one's the carbon filter. You can use a filter housing wrench that comes with the system to loosen up the filter housings and then unscrew them. And then you just unwrap the filter drop it inside and put it back on. Once the filters are inside, tighten the filter housings just hand tight and then with the wrench give them just a little bit more, usually about an eighth to maybe a quarter turn tops, just enough so they won't leak. And by the way, if you're looking for where to invest in one of these Hume SafeWater 10 or Hume SafeWater 6 ultraviolet disinfection systems for your family, you can go to our websites, either watereastore.com in the U.S. or watereastore.ca in Canada. We've got free shipping and discount pricing. The next step is you take the cord that comes with the system, plug it into the side of the ballast, plug it into your 110 outlet. You'll get three beeps and then this light will go green to tell you the UV lamp is lit. Then you can open up the water line coming into the system right after your pressure tank. Open it up slowly and only open it up maximum of halfway at this point and check to make sure as the system fills that there's no leaks. If there's no leaks, then you can open up that valve all the way. And then the, the shutoff valve after the system, you can open up that one all the way and start feeding um, water to your home cottage or cabin. So the next step is to disinfect all your household plumbing with chlorine. Hey, wait a second. I thought that's what this guy's job was. Well, you're right. As water flows through here, it's going to disinfect your water and kill any bacteria in it. But that water that's already in your, in your plumbing throughout your whole house will reinfect this water. So that's why you need to disinfect it with chlorine. But relax, it's an easy procedure. I've got a great YouTube video that shows you exactly how to do it. Again, I'll put a link in the description down below. I've got a great YouTube video that shows you how to replace the filters, clean the quartz sleeve, and replace the lamp after one year of use. Click over here and I'll see you there.